Hello and welcome to this brief overview of my experience working with Blender and Unreal Engine. Now I'm fairly familiar with Blender, I'm not an expert by any stretch of the imagination, but I had up to about three weeks ago never used Unreal Engine and so I thought that during the lockdown I would take the opportunity to learn Unreal Engine. It looks fantastic and it, uh, it's definitely the future going forwards for a lot of people I think. Uh, so I thought, well, well, I've got a bit of time, that's what I can do. Uh, so my intention was to purely do all of my surfacing and animating, etc., in Unreal Engine. But obviously I needed to start in a 3D package, so I started here in Blender. And I created this 3D scene here. And in fact, I started with just a kitchen, uh, but I but as it turned out, uh, when you when you just have a blank kitchen, it looks pretty not right. So I started adding stuff to it, like to make it look a little bit more lived in and a bit more arch viz, as arch viz, as, as they say. And so I made a table and bits and pieces. And I, I, well, anything I didn't already have, I made like this table here. Uh, I sourced things like the chairs, the fruit bowl, uh, the T the uh, furniture in here, the chair, the table, the uh, sofa, uh, made a few things like the magazine rack and uh, pictures, TV, um, hall table here and uh, sourced the light, made the pictures. I made the easy things basically and sourced the things which would take me too long to make and textured it using all three textures. or Everything's f f free from the internet so uh, the idea is that I'm going to include this particular blender scene in the uh, description in the link so you can download it and um, have a mess around yourself so I was, I was actually quite pleasantly surprised to how it how good it looked it's not perfect by any stretch of the imagination now that's half to do with my not possibly getting the best out of blender and certain things like uh, shadows not working that well I, I didn't want to use the contact shadows because they tend to be a bit shimmery and jittery as you can see now uh, but without them they things just look like they're floating too much so I struggled there and as you saw from the animation the uh, there were some certain areas that didn't work quite so well screen space reflections uh, were another issue and they always are as everyone knows uh, they work up to a point quite well, uh, but uh, they they obviously stop working when the bit that you want to reflect is no longer in the screen. And so, as you saw f from the video, and I'll play it again in a moment, uh, there these issues still are here. Now, those issues, actually, funny enough, or some of them, the screen space reflections, especially, is that also apparent in Unreal, as you'll see in a moment. But on the whole, I was quite pleased with the look. I used the irradiance volume to bake the lights here, the global illumination, as it were. And it did take quite a while. I probably used way too many. I think I, let me just have a look actually. I know I used way too many. Uh, but I kind of thought, well, I can just leave it, rend leave it baking, as it were. Where are we? Sky, I've got them here. So if I do the kitchen, for example and just pop it on here you'll see I've got hundreds <laughs> okay how many have I got 16 by 16 by 14 and that's just the kitchen and so the lounge I did 16 by 15 by 14 uh, and so it's it's basically um, you can you can kind of get an idea of how how many that I use and so it took about two and a half hours to bake I probably didn't need anything like as many as that but there you go so I did it but I was quite pleased with this, with the actual look so then I made nine camera mo movements. Let's just pick one and make sure this is the active camera. And so, for example, this would be the first move. You can see what's going on here with my shadows. I definitely have some problems. Now, obviously, I'm rendering it back at screen resolution, but I rendered each one out and nine scenes, approximately 100 to 200 in fact one of them is 300 frames the whole lot took me about six hours give or take half an hour or so uh, so it wasn't bad but it it's um, 
it still took me you know a fair while to do it was, it was by no means real time let's put it that way so before I move on to Unreal Engine uh, let's just have a quick look at the Blender version and then we'll come back to the Unreal part Okay, and so here we are in Unreal Engine, and to start with, the export, the exporting of objects from Blender to Unreal Engine was, for the most part, pretty painless. I just exported via the FBX option, imported into Unreal Engine. In fact, I just dragged and dropped into the library here, and for the most part, they came in pretty well. Obviously, they didn't come in fully surfaced with materials and textures and for the most part I had to redo all of those uh, but that uh, the, they're quite simple materials and textures anyway you know most of them are just textures and uh, rough roughness and um, roughness specularity and metallic if I used them and so it was quite straightforward setting them all up but uh, there were a few uh, problems and they mostly had to do with the UVs the what I, what I um, thought was going to be fine for Blender in terms of UV unwrapping in Unreal you can't have even the slightest bit of an overlap uh, so you've got to really check those uh, so I think I had about I don't know out of maybe 100 models I probably had six that I had to go back and redo and uh, so that the UV maps would work properly for the light mass bake. Now the light mass, ba mass bake is a little bit like the irradiance mass bake. It bakes the whole of the lighting. Uh, if you're using stationary lights, as it were, I won't go into too much detail, but it bakes the lighting into the UV maps on each object. And so uh, the software itself, Unreal Engine, actually creates its own UVs for every single object you bring in and I spent ages making the UV maps in Blender uh, only to find that actually for the most part, 95% of the time, the actual UV maps that Unreal automatically generated for the light mass bakes were better than mine. <laughs> uh, so uh, there was a lesson that I learned. Uh, there are still a few issues as well once with the scene and um, my graphics card doesn't allow for ray tracing unfortunately uh, which I hoped it would because it is a it is a Titan X but it, apparently it's, a, it's the one before the <laughs> typically you know I bought the version before the, the version where they actually allowed for ray tracing but there you go but it does have the option to put in reflection what do they call them spherical reflection spheres very much like Blender or Blender should I say is probably very much like Unreal and you can have planar reflections as well although they do cost more in terms of time to use and cost in terms of uh, speed of use but I found for this particular scene which is very small it didn't make any difference at all the screen space reflections are always a pain and uh, I'll give, give you an example if you don't know what the problem with them is uh, let's have a look at this reflection of the toaster here if I get closer here uh, it's reflecting the top of the toaster you can just see it there but as soon as I were to lose the top of the toaster there I lose the reflection of the top of the toaster so whilst I can't see it on my screen I'm no longer going to have a screen space reflection <laughs> and so that's exactly the same issue as we'd find in Blender but it does allow you if I just 
hide uh, unhide everything to have these spherical reflection spheres and you can dot them all around the place and they don't seem to slow down anything at all you, you bake them as well as the light maps and uh, so on the whole it works quite well but as you can probably see um, I love the actual um, movement of the mouse you can just go forwards and backwards so easily I'd like to have this in Blender actually if anyone's listening and then maybe they can show me a way of actually act activating this uh, it's not the same as the walk option in Blender just so you know it seems it just seems really good anyway it's very quick and when I did exactly the same scenes I rendered the nine camera I, s I set my nine cameras you, you can see them dotted around here exactly the same movements as the exactly I say as close as possible to the blender movements rendered them out and whilst my blender scene took six or, s or so hours to render those nine camera moves this one took about four minutes <laughs> it was so quick in fact let me just um, give you an example of how quick they are to render if I choose a camera let's choose camera number one and let's go to cinematic, cinematic viewport make sure I'm on camera number one okay so I need to actually activate the sequencer which is basically like a non-linear editing um, option so edit cam there we go so this is what it looks like and here's my camera I'm able to set keyframes very much like a usual um, non-linear 3d option you can add uh, tracks you can add um, parameters etc etc and of which there are hundreds by the way <laughs> and the rendering let me just show you how quickly it renders out so I've got how many frames have I got here 150 frames in fact I guess you can probably get a good idea of how quickly it's going to do but if I render this here set it to it's actually on a test now and press capture movie and oh it's over here on my other monitor let me just pull that over here it is rendering and that's actually it rendering out so it's pretty much real time so for all nine scenes it took me about four minutes if that to render them out so what I love about this of course is you can render stuff out and uh, you wouldn't ever have that oh damn I've missed something feeling when you've just finished a, I don't know a three hour render or something like that so it's definitely definitely a worthwhile endeavor learning this piece of software uh, it is absolutely just phenomenal and I, and I love it to pieces and so I'm definitely going to um, spend a lot more time getting to know this software and I would thoroughly recommend anyone who's uh, into 3D in general creating scenes uh, to do the same it's free well up to a point it's free uh, it's definitely going to be free for the most of my life I, th I think I, or never say never uh, but you have to earn a lot of money for it to not be free for an individual and so there's no reason apart from the fact that it is a, f a mammoth piece of software and there's a lot to it there's re really no reason why you shouldn't use it and of course you've got blender which is free unreal that's free uh, what more could you want uh, today is a good day to be alive so with having said that i'll just play the final edit i did with unreal that will be it so thanks for listening to me and goodbye mm -hmm.